I'm ashamed to say that I only recently watched the film Marvelous for the first time, despite the fact that Neil Baldwin, who the film is all about, was actually named after Neil Franklin, who many of you will know I've written a book about. It's a brilliant film, and it's now free to watch on BBC iPlayer, for UK viewers at least. I'm not sure about those of you watching from outside the UK, so if you haven't seen it, I definitely recommend giving it a watch. A good while ago, a friend of mine recommended that I do a video on footballers with disabilities, deformities, or conditions, and I know a few of you have requested it in the past as well. I put it off because I know it won't get many views, but the feel-good factor of watching Marvelous has prompted me to accept the lack of views and make it anyway, which I'm sure my boss will be delighted about when he sees the £7.50 that this video makes in ad revenue. Oh well, it gives me the opportunity to talk about some fantastic footballers, all of whom overcame, or indeed benefited from, what some might consider to be disabilities. So here are seven truly great footballers who had disabilities, deformities, or conditions of some kind. Alex Sanchez Not to be confused with Alexis Sanchez, whose only condition has been chronic inconsistency since leaving Arsenal, Alejandro Sanchez Lopez, better known as Alex Sanchez, is a Spanish striker currently playing in Spain's fourth tier. A hard-working and versatile forward who can play out wide or through the middle, Sanchez is renowned for his intelligence both on and off the pitch. Born in Zaragoza with one hand, despite his disability, Sanchez lived out his childhood dream of playing La Liga football with Real Zaragoza, before moving on to Teruel and Osasuna. In 2018, Sanchez joined Australian outfit Sydney Olympic, where he scored 34 goals in 44 games, and the 31-year-old is now back in Spain and back playing for former club Tudelano. Europe's first one-handed professional footballer, as well as having played top-flight football, Sanchez is also a passionate academic. He has a law degree, a PhD in human rights, and he is looking to obtain a master's in politics as well. I should also mention former United States women's youth international Carson Pickett, who is one of the NWSL's top defenders with Orlando Pride, and also has only one hand. Cliff Baston England had some serious talent on the left flank prior to the outbreak of World War II, but arguably none finer than Cliff Baston. A fantastic forward who had a bit of everything, Bastion was quick, direct, and prolific in front of goal. Only Ian Wright and Thierry Henry have scored more goals for Arsenal than Bastion, who bagged 178 goals in 396 games for the Gunners from the left wing. A recent poll of Arsenal fans ranked Bastion as the Gunners' 18th greatest player of all time, and given the fact that it's been over 90 years since he made his Arsenal debut, that is pretty impressive. Bastin began to lose his hearing at an early age, and his difficulties became more and more severe as his career went on. When Bastin was at the peak of his powers in 1939, aged 27, his career was interrupted by the war. Bastin was excused from military service due to the extent of his deafness, and by the time football returned in 1945, Bastin was completely deaf. It wasn't Bastin's deafness that would end his career, though, but rather a knee injury sustained in a wartime fixture, and he hung up his boots in January 1947, going on to run a pub until his death in 1991. Robert Schleons Coming back from one significant setback requires monumental will and effort, but former German international Robert Schleons came back from two. Born in Germany a decade before the Nazis came to power, promising footballer Robert Schleons was sent off to war before his career had even begun. He hadn't been stationed on the bloody and miserable Eastern Front for long when he was struck by a bullet to the face, shattering his jaw and earning him an honourable discharge back to Germany. Schleons was left permanently scarred, but it was a bullet which probably saved his life. Back in Germany, Schleons soon signed for Stuttgart, where he scored a remarkable 46 goals in 30 games in his first wartime season. One of the stars of the German wartime game, Schleons was powerful, aggressive, and absolutely loathed by opposition defenders. In 1948, though, three years after the war had ended, Schleons crushed his arm in a car crash and had to have the limb amputated. His career as a feisty frontman seemed to be done and dusted, but Schleons came back once again battling his way back to the top of the scoring charts, and even becoming a full German international in 1955. Schleons is remembered as one of Stuttgart's all-time greats, and Alfredo Di Stefano was once quoted as saying, the best man on the pitch was one-armed. From what I saw of him, it was unimaginable for me until now. Gordon Banks Car crashes have taken the lives of so many people and left countless others permanently scarred, and footballers are no exception. Thankfully, Gordon Banks wasn't killed in his serious October 1972 car crash, but he did lose all sight out of his right eye. 
Banks was 34 at the time, but he was still a full England international, and he had been named as FIFA World Goalkeeper of the Year in 1970 and 1971. Considering the injury to have significantly reduced his ability as a goalkeeper, Banks retired the following summer, spending the next four years out of the game. In April 1977, age 39, Banks came out of retirement to play in the North American Soccer League with the Fort Lauderdale Strikers. The NASL was at the height of its fame at the time, but the performances of England's one-eyed World Cup winner suggested that he may have retired a tad early. Banks was named as the division's best goalkeeper, having conceded the fewest goals of any keeper in the league, and he subsequently made the NASL All-Star side alongside the likes of Franz Beckenbauer, George Best, and Pele. Edgar Davids Another legend of the game who suffered eye problems, Edgar Davids was so good, he made kids across the globe want to play football with swimming goggles on in an attempt to replicate the Dutchman's appearance. While some footballers have had to wear protective face or eyewear temporarily, Davids wore protective goggles permanently on a football pitch from 1999 onwards. The Dutch international suffered eye injuries in 1995 whilst playing for Ajax, and he had surgery due to his glycoma in 1999 whilst playing for Juventus. Renowned for his tenacity and explosiveness on a football pitch, Davids is the only man who is still willing to scrap with someone in a charity game, as he exhibited, at Soccer A 2014. Louis van Gaal nicknamed Davids the Pitbull, and the feisty midfield maestro had a magnificent career, winning the Champions League, several league titles, and winning 74 caps for the Netherlands. Hector Castro the story of Hector Castro is one of the game's greatest tales, and one I would be happy to cover on the channel in depth at some stage. Albeit, that is another video that only about 8 people would watch. Nicknamed El Manco, meaning the one-armed, or sometimes El Divino Manco, which is often translated as the maimed god, you can probably guess what Castro's disability was. The Uruguayan legend lost his right forearm whilst using an electric saw at the age of 13, but that wouldn't derail a promising football career. Castro became an instant success for Uruguayan Giants Nacional, making his league and international debut in the same year. A prolific goalscorer, Castro was a robust and well-rounded striker who thrived in and around the six-yard box. He went on to score 18 goals from 25 caps for Uruguay, winning four major tournaments, most notably the 1930 World Cup, where he scored in the final. At club level, Castro still ranks as the seventh highest scorer in the history of Uruguay's top flight. Gorincha Brazilian legend Gorincha is the most unlikely of national heroes, whose rise was remarkable and his subsequent decline incredibly sad. Unable to read or write, and born with a number of deformities, you may have thought Gorincha was destined for a life of destitution in the favelas of Rio. There was something different about Gorincha though. He could play football, better than just about anyone else on earth. Gorincha was so gifted, he played primarily to entertain, and it made him immensely popular. The wonder of Rio would beat players not once but twice, manipulating the ball and bamboozling defenders in a way no one else could. He was nicknamed the Joy of the People for his delightful exhibitions, but when he wanted to, Gorincha could punish any defence as he showed at the 1962 World Cup, stepping up to be named as the tournament's best player following an injury to Brazil's Starman Pele in the group stages. Gorincha had a crooked spine, warped knees, and a left leg that was a couple of inches shorter than his right. Some have theorised that Gorincha's deformities made him uniquely agile and unpredictable, and Gorincha became one of the finest dribblers of a ball to have ever lived. A legend of the game, despite what some may consider disabilities or deformities, Gorincha is widely regarded as one of the greatest footballers to have ever lived, and probably the finest out-and-out right winger the sport has ever seen. Sadly, Gorincha's on-field genius was juxtaposed with constant off-field struggles. The joy of the people, who lost his virginity to a goat at the age of 14, drank heavily throughout his life, fathered at least 14 children, and had serious financial problems. By the time of his death, aged only 49, Gorincha was a physical and mental wreck, but the joy he brought to thousands, if not millions, will never be forgotten. That's it for today's video. Just before I leave you, if any of you are interested, I did a podcast with a channel called Total Sport. Uh, it's called Retrospective. They speak to people about their careers and whatever, and for some reason, they wanted to speak to me. So, uh, I'll try to leave a link to that in the description. If not, search for Total Sport, all one word, retrospective and HITC7s, and it should come up. Thank you again for watching. Give us a like if you enjoyed the video. Leave your thoughts down below in the comments, and if you are feeling very generous, feel free to subscribe to HITC7s.